Welcome back to my channel guys. Today we're learning how to paint two easy beginner friendly watercolor projects for Valentine's Day. This channel is all about learning how to paint watercolor botanicals and flowers. Today I'm mixing up some pinks and magentas and a few greens to paint our two Valentine's Day inspired projects. You could use these as mini paintings or use them as Valentine's Day card designs. I'm mixing up the color in my main palette today and it's just a large white dinner plate and I have artist quality Windsor Newton and Daniel Smith watercolor paints that I've um, squeezed out along the edges and they're kind of in the order of the color wheel and they kind of they just dry and then you can reactivate them and mix your colors so they stay on there and you can use them over and over again. So you see I've mixed up some pinks and now I'm mixing up some greens. I've added a bit of pink to the green you see here to dull it down and make it more of a natural green that you'd often see with leaves. And I am going to mix up just a little bit of yellow as well, just in case I want to mix it into the pink and make more of a peach like I'm doing here. And I, sometimes I mix up more colors than I end up using, but it's always nice to have something started before you get started painting. And I like to swatch them out on a scrap piece of paper as well so I can see how they all look together to make sure once they're painted together on the paper that they are nice pleasant looking harmonious palette and so far so good you guys may notice in this video I have brighter lights I just got new lights for my filming so I'm really hoping that it improves your um, experience watching my videos so leave a comment down below if you think that the lighting in these this video is better and I'm going to continue to try and improve my video filming techniques and editing. So stay tuned as I do post every Wednesday. Right now I'm posting a new watercolor tutorial every week, Wednesday at noon. So here's the last of the swatches. I did the pinks, the yellows, and here's a few greens. And without further ado, let's get into the first painting project. I've used masking fluid in advance to this video to go around the outlines of the L that I drew and this will keep my painting off the edges of the L so that it can be white and clean edges when I'm done the painting. And if you wanted to see how I do apply masking fluid you can check out last week's video where I show you how I use it on a heart painting. So check that out if you would like more info. And right now I'm just starting off with some really loose, simple watercolor roses and leaves. And I'm not concerned if the green is going to blend into the pink and if the colors bleed together. I'm kind of liking that look. And I do want to make sure that I have variations in color. So I'm usually using a stronger concentration of paint in the middle of the rose and then I rinse out my brush, dab it on the paper towel. And then with the damp brush, I kind of blend out the color so that it's a lighter pink. And you can see I use the same technique to paint the um, heart shape from last week's video projects beside the painting there. I'm using a number four round brush with a nice point. You could use any type of round brush you have. I like a medium size for this project, especially because I'm using smaller pieces of paper. And I'm just starting off with my first few roses um, that are front on. And then you can see I'm kind of making one peeking out from the edge of the L here. And at this point, I wasn't sure if I was just going to make a cluster around the L with the um, edges of the pages showing, or if I was going to fill up the entire page. I ended up deciding to fill up the entire page on this one. And I really like how it turned out. And that way you don't have to worry about a composition really. You can just go around, be really relaxed, not worry about making things perfect, and just fill in the white spaces with roses and leaves. You can use any pinks that you have and any greens. I used a permanent rose mixed with a bit of lemon yellow. And the green I really like to use for leaves right now. Um, 
is a mix with Undersea Green by Daniel Smith. You could use Sap Green, Hooker's Green, Perylene Green, Olive Green, any green like that should do. You can always dull a green down by adding in a bit of pink or red because that's the complementary color that'll sort of um, mute that color a bit more for you if you would like. And I'm just working my way around. One thing that's very important when you're working with masking fluid is you want to make sure it is completely dry before you start painting. It doesn't usually take too long to dry if you make a nice even thin layer. And you can see I can, I still have my pencil line showing um, on the end of the L there. And I tried to make sure I covered the pencil with the masking fluid. That way I don't paint over it. And then when I remove the masking fluid, I can still erase the pencil line. So these are the little fine finishing details that will really elevate your painting if you just be mindful of those things. I'd love to know what you think of this painting in the comments down below. So please feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you like it and leave me a comment. Ask, um, ask me any question you have about these paintings or um, maybe comment about a painting you'd like to see coming up on the channel in the future. Now this rose here, you can see that it's worked quite well with the dark center and then the washed out blended petals. And then I dipped a bit of paint on my brush for the outer petals again. And I really like how that color variation has come together. So I'm just going to continue around the entire page here and just fill it in with roses and if I end up doing the roses and leaves and then I have a few blank white spots, I'm just going to kind of sneak a little center of a flower peeking through or the edge of a rose here and there. It's really not very particular. As long as you make sure you leave some white paper showing through, you dab your brush on the paper towel to get some lighter pink and darker pink, this painting's definitely gonna work out for you. One thing you might want to be mindful while you're painting these roses is just that you're going um, from whatever direction of the paper that will work for you to not put your hand in the wet paint. It doesn't take very long to dry, but I always start on the right side because I'm left-handed and move towards the left side just because I've had times where I've definitely smudged my paintings with my hands. And now for the rest of this painting, I'm just gonna continue doing the exact same thing, moving around the L and filling up the rest of the white paper.
I've finished all of my loose watercolor roses and I've made sure that the painting's nice and dry. I let this sit for a bit. You could also just use a hairdryer and make sure it is nice and dry before you start to move, remove the masking fluid. And again, I'm just using this sort of rubber block you can get at an art school. It's meant for removing masking fluid. And just make sure that you hold your paper as you do this so that you don't tear the paper and just sort of move in one direction and then ever so often I just pull off the little bits of masking fluid that have sort of balled up on the remover and then I just put them in the garbage and it's so exciting to do this type of painting and always see how your designs come out once the masking fluid's removed and I'm really happy with how this one turned out. This would be a great project for a gift or putting up as a picture in a kid's room, anything like that. I think this would work really well. And let's move on to the second project now. We're going to be painting one loose watercolor rose and then some leaves, some very simple leaves, and in the shape of the word love in a kind of a block formation you'll see here soon and I'm starting with the rose I'm using um, just a little bit more of a magenta color I just used my pink from the last project and added some permanent magenta into it and you can see I've just kind of made some scribbles and sort of spiral scribbly areas in the middle for the rose in the darker color then I rinsed my brush like usual and I'm just making some sort of broken C shapes and I'm making sure that I drag the color around and sort of dilute parts of it out a little bit and then add in some darker parts as well so it's all about putting some nice fresh paint on your brush rinsing it out dabbing your brush blending it a bit and then letting it all run together to get a really beautiful loose watercolor flower now I'm going to let my rose dry and I'm going to start with the leaves. So I'm going to just use the leaf, just kind of like a very simple um, laurel style leaf. And I'm just going to draw part of the letter or the stem in this case, and then create the leaves. And again, just my brush up on its very point using one or two strokes to make a nice little ellipse shape coming off each side of the stem and of course this is the um, lines that are going to make up the letters so the L and the V and the E will all be made up of leaves and then the O is going to be the rose. While it's wet I still like to dab a little bit of darker green right to the um, part of the leaf that connects to the stem as well. It gives a nice sort of effect because remember with this type of painting we're always going for color variation that's what makes this look interesting and um, a little bit more sophisticated than just a primary style painting that's all just one tone of color and if you need to turn your paper around by all means do i find it a lot easier to do that and kind of pull the brush towards me when i'm doing a nice thin line and you can see here I have rinsed my brush a bit so the leaves on the bottom are a little bit lighter than the ones on the top. And again I'm just dabbing in a little bit of darker green while they're still wet and that's why I kind of work section to section and don't do the whole stem at once and then go around and do the leaves. So I do a little bit of the stem, add some leaves, a little bit more of the stem and so on. Now I'm starting on the V and same thing, same drill, starting with that leaf at the tip of the stem, moving down, alternating the sides, rinsing and dabbing my brush. You can see I dab some of that paint off on the paper towel. And now I have those nice pale leaves to match and um, use that nice variation that we're looking for. And again, now I'm doing a little bit more of the stem and I'm just going to continue on doing this the entire way for the rest of the V and the E. Thank you. 
Now I have my letters done for the leaves and I'm pretty pleased with how that's turned out. I'm just looking at the E and thinking I might want to add it a few more just to the corner there to even things out. And now this is how I had originally planned the design but to me right now it kind of looks like the rose is off, off to the side kind of floating around not connected with the rest of the word or letters. So it's not really how I had imagined it to turn out. So I'm just thinking now, how am I going to kind of unify this whole painting and, you know, portray that the rose is supposed to be the O in the word love as well. And so what I've decided is I'm still going to keep the rose because obviously it's watercolor, you can't paint over it. And I'm going to use my pencil and just sort of um, rough in the top and bottom parts of the O and then I'll add them in with the leaves. So I just have my regular old mechanical pencil and I'm doing this in pencil just because I want to make sure that kind of the top of the O matches the top of the L, vice versa with the bottom, um, so things are lined up so that it, it looks like they belong together. Um, so if you're ever unsure of, of, you know, your next step or where to place something, feel free to just, you know, rough it in with pencil. There are lots of artists out there that do these loose florals and just kind of wing it and it seems to work out and I'm definitely not that type of person. I need some guidelines and I need to map things out so that it's a nice layout and composition first and you just make sure that you kind of erase the pencil right before you're ready to paint or as you're painting so it doesn't um, show through with your watercolor. And I like to use a kneaded eraser for this. It's like a putty eraser and it's really gentle for watercolor paper. And if you kind of knead it a little bit, make sure that there's no like um, graphite marks that'll rub off on your paper as well, which would be disappointing. So you can see now, um, it looks like I erased it completely, but they're just very faintly visible so I can see them still for my guideline. Now I'm using the same green and you could use any green as, that you have. As I said before, I think mine is mostly undersea green mixed with a little bit of pink to mute it down. So I'm starting with the top part of the O and I've just sort of mapped in the stem and it's kind of hard at this angle because my hand blocks the camera a little bit. 
I just ordered a new extension for my tripod and I'm pretty excited about that because I think it'll give a much better top-down angle for my videos. So um, in next upcoming videos I'll be able to have a bit better angle for um, showing painting leaves and probably be able to capture more space as well. So you can see here that I've done the same thing with my leaves. Some are darker, some are lighter, picked up fresh paint, and then I've also um, dabbed it on a paper towel to rinse out some of the paint for those lighter leaves. And I'm just continuing to go around and now I'm checking to see, am I done? Should I add some more little leaves pe peeking out to connect this more to the rose? I decided to add some little half leaves peeking out and I'm quite happy with how that turned out. And you just, just take your time basically and um, don't rush it. You can just use very light colors if you're not sure. They could always sort of dab out with clean water and mop up with a paper towel really quickly if you didn't like it. Now I'm just making sure that um, the bottom part of the O matches up with the top so that it's unified and connected. And now I'm doing the same thing with the leaves, pulling down towards myself, sort of pressing the tip of the brush at the beginning and then pressing down with the belly of the brush to drag out towards me these little ellipse shapes. And this is really good practice if you want to get better at loose watercolor painting and practice your leaves. It's really relaxing and I really enjoyed painting both of these projects in this video. So now I'm just adding in my final leaves and this is looking really good and I'm not worried about it being exactly perfect just experimenting as I go. And you can see that the leaves kind of come down from one side and meet in the middle going towards each other. So I didn't make them all going from right to left. I went down from the right, down from the left, and then they kind of meet and overlap in the middle. So it's up to you which way you want to do that. Um, this is just kind of the way it worked for me with the angle of the camera and my brush. So I'm a lot more happy with how this has worked out. Now it looks more like love and the rose is more like an O rather than just some floater off in the corner. And I'm just making a few finishing touches here, a few more leaves just peeking out, which I think works really well. And I think I am going to try more projects like this in the future with other words. You could even do like somebody's name, um, you know, not on just a square or a rectangle piece of paper, but like a bigger piece of paper and spell out someone's name, which would be really cool for like a baby room or like a project for decorating a nursery or a kid's room. I think it'd be really cool. Here are the finished projects from today's video as well as last week's video. So make sure you check that video out out as well and I'm going to be posting a bonus video this Friday at noon for one more Valentine's Day watercolor project so check that out as well. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below and subscribe to my channel for new videos every week and thank you so much for watching.